Okay, sure. Hi, I'm Aditya Parmar, and I'm a first year at UCSD. I was born in Gujarat, India, but I moved to Indonesia when I was four, and ever since then I've been living there. And then after that, I returned back to in to India. I was in boarding school in Pune for two years, and now I'm here at UCSD. And yeah. which place in Indonesia? It's a small town called Purwakarta. It's around a hundred kilometers away from Jakarta. It's on the main island. Yeah. Wow, very good. So you have been associated with us as a SAT student. Want to know mm -hmm. how was your stress level during the two years of the college preparation journey? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was quite stressful because uh, you had to think about subjects, extracurriculars, testing scores, and everything, and yeah, in 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 all, it it is a lot to put on a student who is trying to just get a good edu good quality of education. Yeah, understand it, understand it. So you have been part of an SAT student uh, did mm -hmm. maths and uh, verbal with us. So mm -hmm. how was master? How, how much master class uh, space was helpful for you uh, in your uh, preparation journey for SAT? Uh, I think it was quite helpful because. It did point out some things where I was lacking. For instance, in math, I, f I usually felt confident and that was not really an issue for me, but in English, I feel like it did help a lot and give me the slight boost in my score eventually. Very yeah. good, very good. So now I want to talk a bit about your course, which course you are doing at mm -hmm. UCSD. At UCSD, I'm a mathematics computer science major, which is a computer science degree that's focused in mathematics more. How it is different from a regular computer science? Relative to regular computer science here at UCSD, you get more choice in the upper division courses that we call it, the advanced computer science courses. We get more of a choice in what we do. And for one big factor that comes in, especially during admissions, is that it's not capped. So if you choose to apply as a CS major, it'll be way harder for you to get in. But if you choose to apply to math CS, it's easier to get in, relatively speaking. Okay, yeah. so basically you are going to get more exposure than a regular CS yeah. student? Especially to math, yes. You you have to take many more math courses if uh, relative to CS, yeah, to regular computer science. Okay, but how relevant are these courses when you, are go, mm -hmm. I mean, you must be having some exposure to what is the current trend going on? How much relevant these courses are going to be in the current you know computer science trend career-wise? Um, if you ask me, I'm just a freshman, so I don't have much experience <laughs> with upper division and advanced courses. But if you ask me, I really like math. And so it was really a no brainer for me. I applied as first choice math, uh, mathematics, computer science, and I got what I wanted. And I think it's really relevant because in the future, especially while you're talking about AI and machine learning, it's very math heavy. And potentially the, the math courses at computer science might not be sufficient for the the level of understanding that a math CS person has. Oh, very good, very good. So, uh, Alta, when you, you you got into UCSC, which is one of the best schools, I mean, how did you prepare mm -hmm. your profile for it? That is a uh, question, and people are inquisitive about it. <laughs> yeah, I get why that's quite a big thing. Because, okay, for me, I really just focused on well, on my academics, that's for sure. And doing all the extracurriculars I could at my school, that's another important factor that plays in. Then testing scores through masterclass space would also have helped. It didn't really help me because UC, uh, UCs are test blind. Test blind. But regardless, it did help me get a better score than I would have. And yeah, so I think I would focus on maintaining, maintaining good grades and really good extracurriculars. So if you really think you like something, please like just go ahead and focus on it a lot more than like trying to diversify in everything. You don't have to do everything. You can always do something specific and be really good at it. I think that's that makes for a better application. Okay. 
and also focus on your essays. Try to tell a unique story. That's my advice, at least. What's you, what's so unique about you? Uh, about me, I could go <laughs> back to my essays, but <laughs> I think that's a story for some other time. Uh, yeah. I can understand that. Okay, so, uh, yeah. what, what are your extracurriculars, by the way? Uh, at high school, I, I was really active, and I was an active member in high school. So, uh, one big thing that I had was that I was part of the STEM club on in school, the science, technology, engineering, and maths, which is pretty common, but. I helped lead some sessions about Arduinos, which are basically small computers. Actually, not computers. I should call them processors. Mm -hmm. And I led that. I led those. And I was really active in badminton. So, like, I led the sessions, organized tournaments, organized screenings, and stuff like that. Apart from that, uh, I also helped. Yeah, like, apart from that, like, I did the IB curriculum. So, like, it it had an emphasis on. A community service and, and stuff like that. So I really involved in that too. It was mandatory. And I, I found it really impactful in like helping the community around in Pune. Apart from that, uh, in, in IB, there's also this other thing called an extended essay in which you're supposed to um, dive into individual research under the help of some faculty and explain what you learned in 4,000 words. So I, I did mine in math. And I found that really interesting, and that helped me find my passion. Yeah, that's that's some of what I did in high school, at least, off the top of my head. Very good, very good. So, just want to know now, since you have already come to your freshman, what are your long-term mm -hmm. plans? My long-term plans? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as of now, I'm a mathematics computer science major, right? But ever since, for my entire life, basically, I've liked biology a lot. And so I think I'm planning to switch to bioengineering with a specialization in bioinformatics. Because initially, while applying, I felt like I would want to do something more abstract and later I can specialize into it. But now I think I found the field that I'm really interested in, which is biology and something applicable, which can help the world overall with the like how I can move towards a degree that does that. I think that's most applicable in bioengineering. And if you do not know, UCSD is one of the best schools in the world for bioengineering. Really? Fact. Yes. Then that's a boon for you. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah. I start. I took a, a course last quarter, and I really fell in love with biology again. Like it it reminded me why I was so interested in biology. So. So you have to drop I, I wanted mathematics. To, uh, I, no, like there will be a lot of mathematics in that too because in the end it's engineering. But relative to now, yes, it will be lesser. But then I'm thinking maybe I could end up with a double major because I like math so much. I could do the do all the courses of both majors and potentially graduate with a double degree. Let's see. I don't have, I've not decided completely on that yet. This is so interesting stuff that you have just told me. Uh, bioinformatics and you know, uh, mm -hmm. you can graduate with two double majors. Uh, indeed, mm -hmm. your knots are quite good. And what is the motive behind it? I mean, fine, interest is one thing, but you are mm -hmm. driven by some 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 idea that you really want to do something so now fine you can graduate with bioinformatics but in mm -hmm. career where do you see yourself you want to work with some software firm you want to work, work mm -hmm. in uh, medical research where do you want to end up okay i think in an ideal world for now my dream job is working in the industry working towards uh, DNA analysis that helps humanity as a whole. That's my goal in life. Very good. You you yeah. have you have some big dreams, and I, I'm happy. Let's it, see. It, it is driven by uh, social impact. Yeah, a social impact and my interest, as you mentioned before. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Now talking about a bit about your uh, college. Apart from mm -hmm. academics, what are you doing? Extracurriculars and all. Tell, okay. tell, tell a bit about your college. Some interesting facts. Okay. Um, so about about my university. So in terms of extracurriculars, one big thing off the top of my head is I, I was a software lead for a project through which we were planning to use brainwaves, EEG signals, mm -hmm. to decode which melody you're thinking of. So for relevance, to make it more uh, relevant, to make it more seem more obvious to what I was trying to attempt, is kind of like a Shazam for your brain. Or like, there's this uh, application called Shazam, and if it listens through your microphone on your phone mm -hmm. and it can get it can tell accurately which song it is. Yeah. So yeah, we were trying to do that on a smaller scale. Yeah. And I let the software lead for that. 
Really? Software team. So now is it launched? Yeah. Not yet. No, <laughs> it's a small scale project. We're trying to replicate what some studies have already attempted to do with an accurate, like PhD students and doctoral research has achieved around, I think the number was 60% accuracy, in, like when choosing between, I think four melodies, yeah, four rhythms. And we're, we're still developing the code. So it's not done yet, of course, because I just started with it 10 weeks ago. So it'll, it'll get there soon. By the way, I, I also hope. use Shazam. To yeah, okay. Cool. And, just, uh, yeah, I exactly. Music. And once your <laughs> yeah. app is launched, what is it? It's going to be an app? Or no, 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 it's just this, no, 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 no. We're just trying to replicate it. Like, so it's just some a small piece of code. We're not trying to industrialize or anything. We're, oh, okay, it's okay, it's okay. a small scale, a small scale project to get introduction. Yeah. Okay. Do let me know when it is done. I'd be very happy to know <laughs> and uh, test it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, so this is one thing. Uh, but this, this this looks more academically oriented still. Apart from this, any mm -hmm. extracurricular sports or something else that you are doing, artwork. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I I'm just involved in many events so far. I've not really been involved in sports or anything. I just. For enjoyment, I, I, I attend many events that are related to many types of things. Um, and what else do I do? Yeah, uh, like thing is, in UCSD follows a quarter system. In that, you only have 10 weeks in, instead of 15 weeks, which a regular semester has. So at least for the two quarters I've been here for, I've not had much time to go outside and like explore much of what I'm interested in. So I've just stuck to academics and stuff like my project. Because you you really do not get time apart from <laughs> apart from out of the these things plus the courses and everything else because <laughs> once you start off for for the first three weeks it it might be a bit relaxed but like you'll be continuing doing stuff sometimes but then you you're hit with midterms and then <laughs> and then you have, you get even more and more midterms so like in the semester system you have more time in between to like just explore and just hang out and chill and relax. But in the quarter system, you don't have much time, much of that time. Quarter is half a semester. Not entirely. It's a 10 to 15, uh, 10 weeks is to 15 weeks. So like it's two third the length of it. Okay. So yeah. I get yeah. tired. So basically mm -hmm. you can say you, how many quarters you have in a year? We have three and then the summer is different. It's basically seasonal. Yeah. Interesting. First in the summer. Hearing yeah. this quarter system. Oh, all the UCs follow it, so yeah, it's kind of that like that, yeah. Okay, in summer, but uh, will you will you be having summer break? Yeah, we have summer break. That's why we have three quarter sessions, which equates to ten times three, which is thirty weeks. And semesters have two semesters, right? So fifteen times two, thirty weeks. So in that sense, we have the same number of weeks, Correct. but then we cover a lot more content and more vigorously over the ten weeks. For example, like in a semester, one course could be. Uh, Calculus one, for example, which is differential calculus, just differentiating and stuff. But here we do we cover all the same topics over ten weeks, which makes it a lot more intense to some degree. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, it has its own pros and cons. Yeah, all the UCs follow the quarter system. Now, whatever it is, you cannot come out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I mean, unless I choose to transfer, which I'm not thinking about it. So, so uh, yeah. A transfer means you can, you can transfer a uh, university also, right? I believe so. Yeah, you can. After, like, yeah, some universities have their own requirements and require essays and your GPA matters more. And I've heard a lot of stuff. Yeah. Very good. Good to know a lot of information from you, Alcia. And uh, I'm so happy that now you are a bit relaxed. And following what you want, <laughs> and uh, yeah. may, may may you get a transfer or you, you graduate with double degree, of yeah. <laughs> and impact the world. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Bye bye. All right, thank you. Yeah.